all of them here uh, operate on the same basic principle. Of course, if you need to generate steam, you need a heat source. So if you have a firebox region and a boiler, the boiler has the water inside of it. Of course, the firebox is where your fuel is consumed. We look at the back, there's a square area hanging down that is the firebox on this engine. Up front of it, the cylindrical <coughs> shape here, that is the boiler. The smoke of that fire and heat has to go somewhere, so if you look through the length of the boiler, you can see little two inch diameter tubes. Those carry the exhaust and the heat from the fire through the boiler, and all those tubes on the inside are surrounded with water that are heating up to generate the steam. Keep making you walk around here a little bit because that's an interesting view that you don't always get to see inside of there. A little bit of a rare scenario with this one here um, a byproduct of producing steel as a gas known as blau gas. You can consider it something uh, similar to a natural gas or propane. We believe carnating steel recycled that blau gas, pressurized it in what you think of propane tanks today, and fired this engine off of that. <laughs> Heading up inside. A couple of controls here. On the far right, there's an arm that sticks up. That is essentially your forward neutral in reverse. Once you select a gear, if you will, uh, the throttle going across the center here at the end of the window. And that's well steam done the cylinders. You have a pressure vessel. You need to monitor the pressure inside. So we have a pressure gauge in the top. Uh, the engine that we operate uh, for the public today, I believe, is set to 165 psi inside the boiler. As you go with more modern engines, they can go even higher. So something like 6325, you can see up to 250 psi inside the boiler. Uh, in comparison, your car tires have about 30 psi, and that's a whole other car. So. Ninety-six was subject to a form of uh, steam locomotive cannibalization, if you will. Um, again, can't go and buy parts if you're trying to, if I'm a forest operation or a heritage railroad running a steam locomotive, it's a lot easier to find another locomotive to take parts off of. That was the case of 96. So a lot of parts from it are missing. Currently on, I believe, number 89, out from Strasburg Museum in uh, southeast Pennsylvania. A great little variety going up in the area by Lancaster. Before that air compressor was event, how did you operate the brakes? Yeah. Well, your brakeman, as your train was moving, would walk from car to car to car along the roofs and manually turn a brake wheel to slow the thing down. Not only did that take a lot of time to apply the brakes, they weren't very effective. The brakes only applied as strong as that brakeman could turn the wheel. And then think about doing it during the winter or in rain, ice, snow, you name it. Very dangerous job. Uh, so it took an act of Congress here, invented by a gentleman by the name of George Westinghouse. You still see some Westinghouse appliances today, part of the same uh, industry there. When he invented this piece of equipment, railroads didn't want to buy it. It was expensive. Railroads were historically kind of cheap and thrifty, didn't want to spend any more money than they had to. So he offered a demonstration. Had all the executives from the railroads, mostly on the East Coast, and other things to come over, ride the train, see how good these brakes were. Normally there would be uh, an insulation over the boiler and a sheet metal jacket just to protect it. That material is off and you can see a kind of a checkerboard gridded up here with markings on it, L29, L30, etc. They're all numbered. To make the locomotive operational now, in each one of those squares, we have to take three ultrasonic measurements to determine the thickness of the metal, down to 0.001 of an inch. If the metal is too thin or corroded, it has to be replaced. Best case scenario, you can replace the metal on the boiler. Worst case scenario, you have to start over and build a new boiler. challengers of that statement. Each one of these tanks capable of holding 1,200 psi.